Come a worthy man. Appreciate the time. I know uh, right now is uh, it's the probably yes. the most unusual training camp of your life, right? Yes, very very weird, un uncontrolled circumstance type training. So it's a it's weird. It's different. It's different. I've never had a camp with anything like this. Yeah. So what what are some of the adjustments you've made so far in the last couple of weeks? Um. Well, I'm um. I'm not like, so I own my, my gym, the academy. That's a gym that I own. So, cause that's not up for run. So, and like, you're not allowed to have groups of more than like, uh, that I want to be like more like two or three or four people. Like, you know what I mean? So, and like, now they're like, you're not really allowed to be out going out unless you're doing a like, stuff. So like, I'm like, fighting's essential for me. So like, you're allowed to work out. They do say you're allowed to work out, but they don't want groups of people. They don't want people around people. So it, it's hard, man. I'm like, gonna have to get people to come and, and train and stuff. And like my normal training sessions aren't really as normal as they, as they should be. And then again, it's people are getting sick. So you have to watch who you bring up and all that. So it's a long process, long process going into it, but we're, we're moving, we're moving forward. Yeah. It's, it's serious paranoia in many ways right because when you bring somebody you don't yeah. know where they have been and they don't know where you have been yeah. so it's like you're looking at everybody I mean, else it's like a, it's like a tv drama like paranoia yes you're like worried like oh what do you do or who did you touch it's not like symptoms don't show for a while so you're like oh i'm good i'm good then next you know this is like that so i mean i have a family and stuff so it's it's it is it's, i mean like I'm trying not to get caught up into the fear factors. I don't really like to give in the to fear too much, but I mean, like, I understand the dangers of it, but I'm not getting into the big, the whole fear thing. I'm like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, I understand, like, the shutdown and them wanting to control it and contain it, but, like, there's people freaking out and killing people over toilet paper and shit. I'm like, nah, dude, I'm not, I'm not getting into that. I'm like, I can't freak out and get into it that much and stuff. So, because all it does is just add to the problem. You know what I mean? Like, it's to a certain situation I can't control. There's certain things you can't control, so I'll do what I can to control the situation. The rest will just fall into place. Being a gym owner it must be much easier for you compared to like a fighter that doesn't own anything. They they have to stay at home and maybe train by themselves. You can actually go to a place yeah. facility. Yeah, because if gyms shut down, then you can't get in. Like the only person I'm letting in right now to train is me. Like if 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 someone else was in the if one, any of my teammates were in the UFC, I'd be letting them in. But if you're not, if you're not if you don't have a UFC fight coming up, you're not training. Like, you know what I mean? Like just, it's just, there's just no need. There's just no need for it. So, I mean, I guess other, other fighters, they're like getting ready for this card as well. I mean, like I'm pretty sure even though their coaches have shut the gym down, they still leave it open to them. I think, I mean, like, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I would hope so. But, um, I mean, I know AKA cause Khabib's out of there. They um they had him like being able to train like two or three hours a day or something like that or whatever. So I guess like everyone's just it's just weird. It's a really like I mean like everyone it's gonna be a it's gonna be a different car. I mean to see how everyone adjusts to it and see who who does things properly, who does things not right, and just take it from there. I th I think I saw Jared Gordon. He went to the gym and the police came and and basically shut it down, told them to leave. And then there's other guys I talked to, you know, interviews earlier this week, and they actually let certain fighters that have fights coming up come into the gym at a certain time, clean everything before, during, after, and then, you know, and then the next group comes in and does their thing. And uh, I think if you time it and schedule it, it works out. Yeah, like it has I me. Mean, like I get it. You can't have like fifty people in the gym because they don't want it. They don't want it to be like that. So I, I understand. Like, like I said, I'm keeping my groups. Like I have the one person that I'm sparring with, or the two people I'm sparring with, my one coach, and maybe one other coach. And that's it. Like, like I trained today. Um, I have a pro boxer. He works with my uh, my boxing coach. He's like eighteen and eighteen, zero oh and two, or whatever. I came in, I got some work with him. We did we did some rounds, and then I worked with my boxing coach after that. And then my other coach who was there, my in my my head MMA coach, she was there, and I worked with him after that. And I left, and that was it. There was like four people in the gym, <laughs> max. And like I'm gonna train tomorrow. I'm gonna get some work with my little brother and one of my other training partners. And it's just gonna be us three. And and then like I'll leave and I'll come back later on and like, I'll probably train with one more person, just me and them for grappling. So I'm not really like having like groups of five or six people. I'll just take what I need and just isolate it and isolate it and isolate it. Not, now, again, I, I will say I don't know if that really helps because like you said, if I don't know where the hell that person's been. <laughs> so it's it's but it is I guess you can say it is kind of like 
decreasing the chance of uh, everyone getting in and spreading it off. So we'll see. Let's go back to your debut, man. UFC 241 last summer. Four days, I believe. You get on the yes, play. Five. People keep messing with me. My, my, my boys keep messing with me. Like, it keeps getting shorter and shorter. So, eventually, by the time, like, next year or something, by the time my next USC contract will be like, I took the fight on three-hour notice. <laughs> it, was, it was just keep getting shorter and shorter. But, yeah, it was like five days. Yeah. Hey, it's better if it's shorter and shorter, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you, know, you pull enough. off one yeah. of the biggest upsets of the year. Um when you look back at it, is it somewhat surreal? Everything, how everything played out? Yeah, I mean, like, I still, like, like there's still times I forget that I'm a UFC fighter. Like, I know I'm training and stuff, but I'm like, oh, shit, that's right. I'm already in the UFC. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'll forget, I forget that. And, like, I'll be watching, like, I was watching a Bellator fight, and I was like, yo, I like the fight. And, you know, I seriously thought this to myself. And I was like, oh, no, I don't have to. I'm in the UFC. Like, I have to, like, keep re Re- reminding myself and since it's been so long now since i've actually like had a fight and stuff so like yeah it's so it, it's it's i mean it's a moment i'll just let just live itself out and play itself out yeah so a lot of things change man once you make that ufc debut it's been a while last summer that's when you had it and now it's like right. what eight eight months eight months, it'll be eight months yeah, yeah. like what what has been holding you back from you know getting back into the cage earlier not fucking me. <laughs> like I was like, dude, if you go to my Instagram every three weeks, I'm I'm like calling a guy out and being like, yo, y'all motherfuckers want to fight? Like I'm just calling guys out, calling guys out, calling guys out, asking for fights. Like I almost took a short notice fight. It was two weeks, but it was in Russia, and like I the the guy was like, he was just such a unique guy. I didn't ever really have anyone I could train with that kind of fought like him, and my weight was kind of up and sip so. But and then I was supposed to have another fight, and the guy went with a different direction instead of taking a fight with me. And then like I called out Ottoman. I called out Ottoman. I wanted to fight him after his last fight. I said, "Yo, let's fight in New York." I wanted to get on that big New York card. That didn't happen. And then they did like five more cards. And then it's like another card. I'm like, "Yo, what the?" F-? I'm hit my manager. My manager's like, "Yo, I'm like riding him." He's like, "I'm riding him." But then like. My buddy that's in the USC, he's like, dude, you get like three fights a year. That's a standard. You get three fights in a 12 month period. Now, yeah, it's like, yo, I've gotten one fight in eight months, so I need two fights in these next four months. I could probably do I could probably do that. Like that's just how they that's a standard way for how they do stuff. So And I guess they're like, You got fifty thousand dollars, shut the fuck up. <laughs> we we, you, we gotta get everybody else paid. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, with uh, Atman, man, he he. He's a brawler. You could you describe him as a brawler? I wouldn't say he's a brawler. I would say he's more of a he's a uh, he's a technical. I would say he's a technical aggressor. Like he he has technically a, he's technically aggressive. He has he has there's setups to the things that he does and stuff. Like he's smart about the ways ways he does and he's tough. Moroccans have a lot of really good kickboxers. He's really really good. His brother is a fighter, so it's it definitely in his DNA. He has good power, but he's basic. He's like four. He he's 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 a car that goes in the second gear and can run like a motherfucker in the second gear. But I, I have like twelve different gears I can get to that. Like I mean I no I mean like he's his fundamentals aren't that deep, but they're 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 good. He's really good at what he does. But I I just think my 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 pedigree of striking is better. My my IQ is way higher. My wrestling is better. My jujitsu is better. I mean, like I just think I'm a better fighter all around. And he's twelve and zero, so it, it looks it looks good, man. Like you know, what I mean, he's twelve and zero with like a eighty five percent knockout ratio. I'm like, yeah, that's that's good. He has the juice, and I want to take it. He has like he also he like he has like one of the few fighters out of Morocco. I think one of the only fighters out of Morocco in the UFC. Or there's two now. There's another guy just fought too. So he has a lot of like. A lot of like Instagram followers and shit. So I'm like, cool. I'm just, I'm just going around taking the juice, man. Like that's cool with me. Give me that juice. Bring that shit here. There's a lot of hype on him. Like he trains with Khabib and him. He, his manager's Ali, and he's all around those guys. I'm like, cool. That's what I want. This is good. They're like this, like beating Devonte, like slingshot at me. And this is just going to slingshot me again. I'm going to come in. I'm going to fucking work him over. You know, just slingshot me again. So then you can go back and tell all your high. High, high, um, celebrity fighters, but yeah, this guy whoop my ass. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you go like Khabib, no. <laughs> yeah, with um, so with him, yeah, through. he's uh, he's he's undefeated. Do you think a lot of people get mesmerized by that that word undefeated? 
Yeah. The fans I mean, in particular. I, I, yeah, fans, yeah, they're throwing people's dicks for that shit. I'm like, I mean, like, if you're undefeated, who the fuck have you fought? That's my thing. Like, who have you fought? Like, I mean, I looked at his record. He hasn't fought fucking anybody. Like, he's fought some fucking bums. I mean, not bums, but the guys are just basic. Like, 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 no, like, they're just, just regular guys. I mean, like, there's nothing, nothing over the top or special. I've, I mean, I mean, throughout my career, I've fought six UFC guys, six guys in the UFC. Like, like, I mean, like, so I mean, like, I mean, like, so for me, I just feel like we'll we'll have to see what happens when he gets taken in the in the deep water. Most people that are undefeated. Like they just haven't been pushed to the limit of being broken yet. I lost my first pro fight, so that shit went right out the window. Out the window, of my beginning of my career. So I mean, like, I'm like, oh, I lost. All right, now it's time to just keep going. Like, I want, like, I mean, like, I want, I want to see, like, you know, what, what, what you're really made of. Because like, I've been pushed to the limits of breaking. I've been broken, and I've had to fix myself and put myself back together again. I've lost six times throughout my career. Been knocked out five times, like five TKOs. I'm like, I'm not easily broken. Like I'm a fucking thoroughbred. I think he's a front runner, and once I get in front, he just we won't he won't get used to being have to play catch up. I've been playing kept playing catch up my entire career. That's been my fuck. I was just explaining my career has been always playing catch up. So I'm like, don't get me wrong. I'm not sleeping him. He's a fucking killer, but he's a front runner. I've dealt with front runners before in my career. I've dealt with guys that are solid heavy punchers. I'm gonna see how he likes my the way that I have adjusted and I've getting I, I only get better. So we'll see. See how he deals with it. Dana White, you know, he comes out and says, yeah, we got a we got a venue. We got a location. You know, we're not going to have an audience, but we got a place. But the location is unknown. You know, does it kind of give an old school vibe? This location not being known, like you're going to get on a plane. You might not know where you're going. It's like it's like that Bruce Lee movie. Dude, seriously. Yeah, exactly. It was like Enter, enter the Dragon. Return Enter yeah. the Dragon. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> like, 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 you don't know. They're going to fucking blindfold me and take me to this place. Like, oh, this is where we're fighting. I'm like... So like I, I actually like I, I I freaking didn't even realize my passport was expired. So I had to like expedite my passport, and they're like shutting down all that stuff. So I got called this place tomorrow to make sure I get my passport. Like I sent it out like last week, and they told me they had the files and they were sending it through. So I should be all good with that. So I'm like I gotta make sure I get that done because they said they're only giving out ones for like life threatening matters. I gotta be like yeah, I'm dying. I gotta get back. I mean, I don't, I don't I fucking lie just to get my passport and shit. So I'm like shit. So I'm making sure I get that all lined up. And then I also heard they're supposed to be having it in Florida. Or some people are saying they're supposed to have it in Florida because the law, the mayor or whatever, the governor down in Florida, he's like really weird with the laws and stuff. So he's supposed to be able to let them have one by April. And then the fucking president just came back on and said, yo, fuck all y'all. But time um, Easter, everything's going to be back to normal. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm pretty sure Dana White would want to have the fight here in the U.S. Like, so that way we don't have because I think if we go anywhere else, We'll have to get fucking quarantined for like two weeks. Once yeah. you leave the U.S. and you come back, you have to get quarantined for two weeks. Like, I mean, the the United States president might say, fuck it, we doing whatever shit. But other countries are going to be like, no. Like, so when we come back, we'll have to get quarantined for two weeks. So I, I'm hoping it I'm hoping it still happens in the United States. Um like I said, I'm hearing a lot, lots of multiple different things. I, I think he's the cool thing is it doesn't have to. He doesn't have to tell anybody until like the week of. If it, if it's in the United States, he doesn't have to tell you until the week of because ne- there's no crown. He doesn't have to worry about people getting hotels or anything like that. He has to worry about the us, the virus being able to get there and stuff. So he can wait until like Monday and be like, this Saturday, motherfuckers go crazy. Let the let the demand build up and stuff. I mean, like he's a smart business guy, so I know he knows he knows what he's doing and stuff. So I'll just I'm just. Us, us P people, we're just sitting on the side, just training this shit. <laughs> it's the, it's the weirdest feeling. You're like training, like I know who I'm fighting, where you fighting. I have no fucking idea. I might be like shit was going on the other day, like they was fighting on the fucking moon. I'm like, <laughs> I might be fighting on the moon. I don't fucking know. Yeah, so it's, I mean, it's a cool feeling. But it makes you have to stay focused. You know, no matter what, you're gonna step into the cage. You're gonna fight. You're gonna make your second appearance in the octagon. Do you envision a first round knockout? Is that something that you look at and say, this is what I need to get another one and get another bonus? I need that 50K. I'm definitely fighting for 50K. But, I mean, like, you get 50K for a fight at night. You can get 50K for the sub. I can get 50K for, like, you know what I mean? Like, whatever. But I'm not, I don't come, I don't never, like, people don't believe me. But even though my record's, like, I'm a 15 and 6 and I have a 9 knockouts or whatever, I don't try to knock people out. I don't. 
It just happens. Like I don't go and I don't go in a fight. Like I'm gonna knock this guy out. I'm like, no, I'm gonna go in a fight. So I'm gonna fight. And people, it's just the way that I fight forces people to do certain things, and it gives me knockouts. That's just the way it happens. Like I don't, I, I keep trying to tell people, like I don't hit hard. People are like get the fuck out of here. Like I don't, I don't really hit hard. I just I force people in the bad in the bad places, and I and I hit them when they don't think it's going to be able to get hit, and that's how my punches how my punches work. So I don't ever go into fights thinking to get knocked out. I know I have the capability to knock people out just because of my irky jerky style, my length, my timing, you know, like how I fight, my fight IQ and stuff. But I don't go into fights thinking I have to get knocked out. So I'm like, I'm cool. I'm in shape. I can do all three rounds if I need to, hard, fast, and full tilt. So I'm just, I'm going there to get the W. But I am an entertaining fighter. I'm not boring. Like that's just the way I, I don't like I'm gonna go out there. It's it's a spectator sport. So yeah, I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna give the fans what they want to a certain degree. Cause in my last fight, fucking dumbass fans was like you, MMA fans are some of the dumbest people. I love you guys, but y'all are fucking dumb. <laughs> like MMA fans be like, this shit is garbage. No one's dead yet. Boo. <laughs> y'all fuckers is stupid, man. Like, like they were booing us in our in my last fight, all because like we weren't just like throwing like psychotic maniacs i'm like dude like you guys gotta like understand like i get it some fights are booable like that israel and Asanya fight i'd be okay if people boo that fight but like i've seen people boo stuff and you're sitting in like yo let us get a feel for it like let us let us like catch catch what's going on let us get into a rhythm and stuff you can't just expect every fight to be like old school vandalay silver it's like fuck it <laughs> like, but like majority of the people that watch mma just want to be entertained by violence like they say mma fans are like uh they're like the romans they don't care yeah. if the gladiator or the lion wins but somebody's gotta yeah. die <laughs> like that's just how it is and like it's it's a really hard sport when it's like that and like i mean people used to boo gsp they boo anderson silver and shit you're like yeah. The fuck is like like he's not doing enough. He's not even trying to kill that guy. He's just winning. Like what do you mean? Like we're in a fucking fist fight. Like with another human trying to kill me. How am I not trying to win? Like I've had fights. Like my last fight here in Pittsburgh. Like I knocked a guy out in the third round, and people were like, "Were you just toying with him?" I'm like, no, motherfucker. Like people don't toy with people in fights, dude, because it it can go south in the blink of an eye. If I have the opportunity to beat you and finish you. I'm going to do it if I if I don't if it doesn't manifest itself it doesn't manifest itself but we're not just in there like oh this is fun like that's how I, I don't know I mean maybe that's just how fans think is because they've never if you if you've never trained if you've never trained or if you've never had a fight you may watch it and be like oh this motherfucker ain't even really fighting but believe me he's fighting <laughs> he's fighting that's how he makes his money and his life is on the line because the other guy's trying to pin his head open like. I don't know. It's weird. That's a weird, a weird topic. I, I be getting at fans. I'm like, like it's in like some of the things that they write. Like, oh my god, I was like reading down some of the things that people are writing after my fight. And there were some dudes like dead serious. Like, yo, I'm a hundred percent sure. Come on, Devonte talked in the back. They saw how much of an <laughs> underdog he was. And somebody bet, and they let him get knocked out for money. <laughs> And these dudes, and there's like five or six guys like going on a trip. Like, yeah, I know that shit's happening. I know that, that punch didn't even fucking land. I'm like, yo, you motherfuckers are stupid. Like, it's it's just so bad. But it, like, I get. I'm like, I guess because you don't un- really understand. Like, do you know? I'm like, uh, I'm like, you know how hard it is to get there. Like, so he's just gonna let me just knock him out because we're buddies. And he sees how much I'm, talking. I'm like, no, dude. like, what the hell are you talking about? I'm like, one dude was like, that punch didn't even touch. Definitely fucking fake fight. No, oh, I hate talking. It's funny shit though. I mean, like sometimes I'll just read the interviews, like read the like comments, like when I need to be entertained. I'm like, wow, it's just like it's. My and, and, and people still write on it now. Like as I get closer to my fight now, like people are like going back and viewing other stuff, and they're just writing. And it's I'm just and I try to respond like LOL, <laughs> like like the emoji face, like damn, really, dog. <laughs> like oh, this, this is, is what it is. <laughs> it's yeah, funny. Man, it's 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 some of the wildest things on social media that you can read. Yes. Um, you know, fans, yeah, it is. and sometimes that thing is like I think they're just writing stuff just to write stuff. To be honest with you, I don't think they really believe it, but there's got to be guys out there that believe what they write. It's it's, it's just you know. I mean, if, if it you pops in your head, you grasp at it. Like at one point, you kind of thought about it. Yeah, it, it, it's 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 really weird to see. I mean, I like. It. I think it, it's 
funny. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. shit. Like, you know, you have people talk about basketball players and football players. And I'm like, oh, I'm one of those guys that people get to talk and write shit about. I'm like, I'm on her. I'm like, yeah. Mm-hmm. I just laugh at it. I just think it's funny. It's like hilarious. I like yeah. it's, I mean, my man Cody, uh, Cody Garbrad, he used to, we, we used to work together. We trained out my gym for like um, three years. We trained together and stuff. And like he would like go on to his post, be talking to people. I'm like, yo, like man, like there, because people talking shit and could respond to him. And I'm like, I got, I get it, because you just be like, yo, shut the fuck up, like damn, because people just go on your shit just to like talk shit, like just trolling and talking shit on them. Like wow, like, it's funny, funny stuff. Uh, man, you you got a fight, man. April 18th, UFC 249, two big UFCs, yeah. pay per views. Back to back location is unknown, but it doesn't matter. You're gonna get there. You're gonna throw hands and try to get that bonus. Thank you, Kama, for the time, man. Uh, good luck on the fight and good luck on everything and all the things that you're doing outside the cage, also. Yeah, but man, they, man, thanks for having me on, brother. I, I almost, I'm, I, I've been horrible with interviews lately. I've been forgetting to get back to people and stuff. So I'm glad I got back to you. It was a great interview. I like it. It's a lot of fun. 